Hey all! In this week's video I am discussing something which is of academic debate. Down below in the description there are some links to some of the sources that I've used to create my argument if you want to go and have a look at that. But anyway, please enjoy the video. The chances are, if you are watching this video, you have played some sort of city building game such as SimCity or City Skylines. The objective in this game is to basically build a city and it's very much down to your own ideas. But you would have noticed, especially if you're from Europe rather than North America, that there are some very heavy restrictions and these restrictions are called zoning. The restrictions in the game, for instance, will be mainly industrial, commercial and residential. So why do these zones exist? Zoning is probably a word, if you have played these games, that you have came across before. It is used to decide the type of building that you will be able to go in that specific section of a city and its basic purpose. The idea of zoning is to present policies. It's not really a legal concept, but a policy concept. And it is on how a building can be constructed and how it can be used when it's in a certain area. For instance, traditionally a warehouse would be in an industrial zone. And the reason for this is because a warehouse is mainly of an industrial concept. And you wouldn't really want to find a warehouse in a residential zone because people would not want to necessarily live by a warehouse. This is very much an American concept with the Europe traditionally not having such stringent or if at all any zoning systems. In the UK for instance there are rules which may specify how you use the land, they are provided in law, but it's more based on the individual title in registered land rather than overall restrictions on an area. The first city that properly introduced zoning was New York in 1915, becoming the first comprehensive zoning ordinance city. Inspiration came surprisingly from Europe, uh, in particular the UK, with the garden city concept that was starting to spring about, and other things such as Metroland. So zoning really is coupled with the idea of transportation and technical advancement. Zoning is based on the idea of social development within a city and the process allows for orderliness, rationality and a mechanical building process to happen which in turn creates this idea of city beautification. However zoning, although it has its positive aspects, also has its negative aspects on city beautification schemes because of the idea of abandonment. For instance, in the Lower East Side of New York and in Greenpoint, again in New York, where there is systematic abandonment and because you've got certain type of use buildings such as commercial buildings in the Lower East Side and you've got industrial buildings in Greenpoint, you can't really do anything about them because the uh, industry, for instance, in Greenpoint has moved to New Jersey and all you're left with is industrial buildings and no one really wants to, to take part of them, apart from residents want to take part of them, but you can't have residents in an industrial zone because of how strict zoning is in America. City zoning has not always been an easy process. For instance, in New Haven, Connecticut, where there was a movement known as the City Practical Movement, which started in 1907 and resulted in many resignations on the city board because of the dispopularity of the movement, because they couldn't really get it going. This city practical movement was known to have many issues, although it kind of represented the zoning system that was later introduced into New York City. And it took a challenge to get it to work in New Haven, and it took some time and it ended up 
being scrapped and then retried. Uh, it resulted in much conflict within the city government and some people being more influential than others. Issues with city zoning as well tend to be when a city or part of a city becomes abandoned and you can't really do anything to the buildings and you can't get people back in the buildings because they've moved elsewhere and you can't change how the building is then used so the area becomes abandoned for instance this happened in the lower east side of manhattan and it also happened in brooklyn at greenpoint so the greenpoint uh, model that was used and is quite new is the idea of mixed zoning so that will allow residents to move into some buildings like the old warehouses to have them as homes this is a new concept it's only been working for maybe the last 10 years whereas in the uk and in europe this process has started much earlier such as like the london docklands scheme which started in the 80s and 90s hence how city zoning is quite restrictive so why do city games have zoning the idea is basically because the cities the city games are American and they're based off the American model. What system do I prefer? I prefer the British or the European system of in the land registration having the restrictions of the building because it is far more flexible than the city zoning system that is in America and I would think that that's the best way to adopt. And that's why you have all the different colours on the city games that you may play. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you like some of the academic comment. I would like to re recommend some people to go and research and some sources that I have got my academic argument from. So I would recommend reading around Robert Moses. There is a good book by Corot on this which I would recommend reading that is down in the description as well as Jane Jacobs they're both on the New York City zoning and the issues that occurred during zoning and other city movements within New York City uh, there are some of the journals as well that I use are down below in the description and finally one book i would like to recommend is the city in american history by blake mckelvey though it's an old book i would really recommend reading this if you are into the differences between european and american cities and how the american city has developed in such a way that is so different to their european counterparts the book is relatively cheap, you can pick it up normally for a couple of quid on eBay, maybe about $5. So I really do recommend reading that if you can get a chance. Finally, I hope you have enjoyed this academic style of video. It's something I would like to introduce more of, but it will be on a basis of when I have time because it's very difficult to get out academic videos and do all the research. Uh, if you have enjoyed this academic video, please give me a like down below because it really does help and it shows the support that people are giving towards my YouTube channel. Again, if you have some points that you'd like to put across about how cities have changed and how zoning really works, uh, you can leave a comment and if you are maybe wanting to present uh, your own argument please do leave the sources of your argument down below because it does help me and it helps other people and it's great so that you can look into different things and come with your own views finally if you are new to my channel please make sure you subscribe by by pressing that subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification button you can also follow me on Twitter and Snapchat, they're right next to me now. And there are two videos at the end. One is last week's video, well, from three weeks ago, because I have been off with flu. 
and there is also a recommended video for you. I hope to see you next week at 4pm on Friday with a much more vloggy video. Look forward to seeing that and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. Why don't you click subscribe? Make sure you check out last week's video. Why not follow me on Twitter or Snapchat?